you're probably wondering why I gathered you here today. <laughs> Actually, what we're here to talk about is how DaVinci got started. A lot of you have come here in the last couple of months and are not familiar with the, a lot of the stories that uh, gave birth to DaVinci, and so I figured what we'd do is share some of them, tell a couple of the stories, and uh, give everyone a broader perspective on how this grand scheme called DaVinci Systems got started. Back in high school, uh, Paul Ramsey, who a lot of you met, Matt, Matt Aka, who most of you have met, and Chris Evans, who unfortunately a lot of you have to work with, um, and I knew each other. And Paul Ramsey and I uh, had a company back then called Better Software and a national selling product called Better Text. And we were in this English class, this uh, honor sen senior English class, and there was this ninth grader, a freshman in there also named Matt Aka, um, who couldn't stand the fact that there was a couple of computer people that might know more than him. And he went around telling stories about how he had this uh, TV camera on his computer and if it recognized, it would program it to recognize his brother's face and not let his brother use the computer. Oh, was other baloney. How he was making millions of dollars selling secret uh, software to DEC and IBM and things like this. So we blew him off. And he had a bad reputation for not telling the truth. Um, so one day I was in college. This is about two years later. And I was walking down near the physics building. And there was Matt Ocko, who had finished all his high school courses, and this is when I think he was 15, and uh, who's now taking some college courses. And he stops me and goes on to tell me the story about how he's working with the physics department, and what he's doing is he's connecting um, a cyber, um, an F, some kind of an FPS, a couple of crays from the Navy and the Army, and he's connecting these all up and down the East Coast. And they're going to crunch through like two gigabytes of physics data to determine some great physical principle about the universe. And I said, you know, right. Why don't you, I, I tell you what, Matt, why don't you show it to me? So the amazing thing was that he went and showed it to me. And I talked to the physics professor he was working with, and in fact it was true, and he really was doing this. And, and uh, I realized that at least some of his stories were true. It was at that very moment that Matt suggested to me that we should start a company. And he said that uh, he had all these great contacts, and he just didn't have the business acumen to run a company, and he needed someone like me. So uh, we sat down one day, and, and we listed all these clients who was going to pay us like $25 an hour for us to help them uh, get their computers running and to do consulting and stuff like that. And uh, so that was the, the birth of DaVinci Systems. And that, sometime after that, we went out and solicited the help of uh, Paul and Chris, and DaVinci was born. Turns the 100 around and pushes it in front of Chris and I, and there's the art of technology as if we've just seen the ninth wonder of the world. So Chris goes into the 100 and types in and capitalizes the A and the R and T in technology. And uh, Chris and I look at each other and say, that's it, that's it, the art of technology. And, and, and Matt says, no, I already thought of that, that's what I typed in. And Chris says, and Chris says, well, no, it was all wrong, because you didn't capitalize it. I said, yeah, Matt, I mean, it doesn't count unless you capitalize it correctly. And that was, <clears throat> that was the first time we got to see Matt throw a temper tantrum. I'll never forget, it was one of the first times. But uh, that's, that's Da Vinci Systems and the Art of Technology. That's where it all came from. And uh, grudgingly, I have to give Matt a lot of the credit for that. And if Matt ever sees this, and he probably will, he'll probably be ranting and raving and happy that uh, someone actually gave him credit for it because he's quite sure that when he's not around, no one ever gives him credit for it. But we do. So what? which luckily they condemned and tore down since then. But that was about, uh, I don't know, 
10 feet by 5 feet, or 6 feet, and that was the entire expanse of the first Da Vinci office. But things started to go well, and we moved across the street to 105 South Dixie, which was uh, what was then the legal clinic, and we got 350 square feet over there, which is a whopping amount of space. Actually, had carpeting on the floor, and uh, 50 of the square feet was the bathroom, so we counted that just to make the number seem bigger. And uh, it was a kitchen, but we, we put carpeting over the tile on the kitchen floor. So it was more of an office, but you could still you could see the kitchen counters and the place where the refrigerator was supposed to go. Well, we grew and got better than that. And the next place we moved to was 109 Chamberlain, or 109 Enterprise Street. No, 16 Enterprise Street. I live at 109 Chamberlain. <laughs> 16 Enterprise Street. That's uh, an apartment complex with four, four college apartments. And uh, we rented out. We had 900 square feet there, about 80 of which was bathrooms again. And uh, we had partitions in each of the, the, the ceilings. Three bedrooms, or two bedrooms and a living room. We had partitions all over the place and shelves, and it was just a complete mess. An interesting incident of 16 Enterprise Street. Uh, there was one point where uh, Paul Ramsey calls us about 8 o'clock in the morning and says, whatever you do, don't go to work this morning. We said, well, why? He said, well, I was looking on the news, and the SWAT team has got this guy with a gun holed up upstairs in the apartment above yours. So, of course, we ran over there to see what was going on. Uh, by then he'd been taken out, but, uh, uh, you know, of all the offices we've had, that's the only one so far that's had its own built-in psycho. So, that was interesting. When well, we moved over to 2806 Hillsborough Street, third fl uh, second floor of the F. Carter Williams Architect Building, 3,000 square feet. Now, the reason we moved there was because Software Publishing was just about to close a million dollar deal with us, and we had negotiated the contract for six months, and all the lawyers had signed off on it, and two days away, we were going to sign this contract and we're all going to be rich. And it was that afternoon that they called us. I was in the middle of an Asteroids game. I remember it very well. Probably like a lot of people older than me remember when John F. Kennedy was shot. And I was playing Asteroids and they called me and they said, Software Publishing's, the people we were working with were on the phone. And I knew something was wrong. So they called us up and said, you know all these promises you've been making and all this building you this building you rented and this equipment you purchased and these people you've hired? Well, you goofed because we're going to pull the whole deal on you today and everything we've worked towards in the contract is dead now. So uh, you're kind of in a bind, but well, it's been good doing business with you and we'll talk to you later. Actually, in their behalf, they did give us some extra contracts after that to help us get over some of the financial commitments we had made. But we were in this huge building, twice as large as we needed. There's no way we were ever gonna be able to afford it. And uh, you know, we were only using half of it. Well, it was with a month later where we had the place filled and we were continuing to grow, although we could, we could barely afford it. And there were times where I'm not quite sure how we afforded it. But we had 3,000 square feet there, and we were there until, uh, I guess, August of 1989 when we closed the big Novell financing deal, and we got a whole lot of money in the bank, and we moved to where we are now, 4200 Six Forks Road, Suite 200, our second floor. We've got the whole second floor here, half of the third floor. My office is bigger than our first two offices put together, and not really, but close, it sounds better. And uh, we've got a lab and a big library and a big reception area, and it's nice. I'm very proud of this place, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see where the future takes us. I think the next place I want to go to is some place out of, oh, I don't know, some place out where land is cheap at least, U.S. one or some place like that, where we can buy uh, a couple dozen acres, put a lake with some ducks on it, and a uh, volleyball court, sand volleyball court, tennis court, and a whole bunch of Da Vinci buildings. And that's probably the next place we'll go, but time will tell. And, probably look back at this and know and either laugh or say, boy, I was not very ambitious, was I? But we'll have to see. So that's the history of the Da Vinci buildings. And uh, consider yourself lucky if you've only been working in this one because we've had to climb quite a ladder to get to where we are now.